Uh, all I can say is cat on a boat. Cat. <laughs> Hope you like cats. If you like cats. Won't now. On a boat. <laughs> and and this you, is... Actually, if you like boats or cats, you probably will not enjoy this movie. Right. <laughs> I, I, or you I, might. Th- there was a different t- introduction I, I wanted to do with this, but... I mean, oh. if you if you said uh, uh, there is a terminology so bad that it's good, and that's what fits with uninvited. And uh, I'll start by the director of this film is Graydon Clark, and I, I was talking to Caleb about this. Now, Graydon is just like one of the sweetest, nicest guys you could possibly meet. Uh, he, I mean, you, it's amazing you take someone like Quentin Tarantino, who is you know, uh, kind of a pervert, but he makes millions and millions of dollars. <laughs> then you take a guy like this, who just is the sweetest guy. And uh, last films he makes are more family films. He made a family film this last time, but it, it's a long time coming. He started back in the seventies during the exploitation era. And then eventually he started as an actor, to be honest with you. And then he went into, uh, directing. And, you know, if you go back to his, uh, I guess you would say his, uh, filmography, you, you'll find typical exploitations and, uh, you know, back in the, uh, seventies, you know, uh, you know, like Satan's cheerleaders and things like that. And then we get into wacko in the eighties. The eighties changed for this guy. Because, uh, you know, the, the movies were blockbusters. If you looked on, you know, in, in 1987, you won't even find this film. You won't find this film listed as, I don't know how it came to be. Like I said, I discovered it two years ago. And I said, I have to see it. I have to see it. So I've seen it several times. And like I, I was telling Caleb too, I'd get on the internet when I first watching movies and look for weird stuff to watch and if i knew there was a film that a cat barfed a a rat out that would eat people or bite people i'd be like i'm there dude where do i find this film but i never heard of it until a couple years ago and i did see it i was not disappointed it was everything i hoped and wanted it to be (laughs) if you can imagine it was just uh, you know, even more uh, about it. But like I said, uh, I'll give you some of Graydon Clark's uh, filmography to get you guys started uh, who he was. Like I told Caleb, I probably could have contacted him and asked him to be on this thing. I don't know how much he charges for a Google Hangout. I was very curious. Um, but, uh, you know, it's typical like Satan's cheerleaders, black shampoo. So you got your sex exploitation, your, your black exploitation, kind of those films, uh, high riders, which is motorcycle movies. All these films were basically in the seventies. And then when the eighties comes, he gets into horror films. Cause like you can't really lose with the horror films. You cannot lose money with horror films. And, uh, and of course, like he did the wacky comedy joysticks, which is the first video game movie but then he does final justice with joe don baker who he's good friends with and which is more of like an action film and he got and at the time malta was uh, giving people free trips to film over there so he took advantage of that now this film comes about after final justice and after wacko and like i told caleb i wouldn't even recommend watching wacko it's terrible it's disturbing it's not even worth your time and i said there's offensive and there's cringy this borders on offensive and cringy that's how bad it is (laughs) and so this film uh, on the other hand it's it's watchable and not offensive enough to to like turn your stomach it is what it is it's a cat that kills people or or that's all it is it's, <laughs> it's wonderful i'm <laughs> cold and it costs two hundred thousand dollars to make that's all it costs whoa yeah seventy five thousand dollars went to three of the top actors which included uh george uh I, oh golly Clue Gallagher, who just came back from uh, Return of the Night of the Living Dead, Return of the Living Dead. He was 
he just uh, did that one, which was a big, big hit for him. So it was a good, it was good luck that he got Clue Gallagher. Then, of course, uh, George Kennedy. And I don't know who Alex Cord is. Don't ask me who Alex Cord is, but he is the mustache twirling guy that we see on this photo. Hi, I'm Bob Sleazy. <laughs> <laughs> or Walter Graham. Hi, I'm Walter Graham Sleazy. <laughs> uh-huh, uh-huh. And, <laughs> and so Walter Graham, the $75,000 went to them. Uh, fifteen to $20,000 went to the boat. So, and then the rest went to the other little actors, but they also had to pay for a crew to ride the boat and a crew to film the place. So just imagine, just on a shoestring budget, they did this, this film in guess how many days? Oh man, uh, one. <laughs> <laughs> 15 days, 15 days. They shot the boat on the pier. They never left the pier. But they spent one day out on sea. He paid, had to pay the crew like a two thousand dollars to shoot out on the sea. Uh, you know those scenes, and they did that in one day, so fourteen days on the pier, and then uh, like maybe a day in his swimming pool. So it, it totaled around fifteen days. And we'll go over the swimming pool scene. And uh, who wants to dive into it? Oh boy! Whew. Whew. Man, okay, I'll take it. I'll totally take it. Um, so what the gist of this film, or at least where it throws you to start with, is uh, some laboratory, okay, mm-hmm. with doctors examining this cat, and they're like, "Hey, man, there's something in this cat. We don't know what it is. It ain't supposed to be in there." And uh, somewhere along the line, the cat gets away from them, and so they're like, they freak out. And all of a sudden, they like call for radiation police to come in, which I loved the radiation police, by the way, their <laughs> outfits. Like, I don't know who put those pillowcases on their head and cut the eye holes for the radiation suits, but uh, their mom did a good job. Uh <laughs> So an A-plus on the costume design there. Uh, Then, (laughs) while they're trying to catch this cat, uh, confusing to me, of course, they start, like, I I don't know how to explain it, bleeding from their their pillowcases (laughs) without... Without even, like, the cat doing anything to them. So I I didn't know what to think at first. Okay. (laughs) And then, uh... They don't really give you an explanation. You see, like, something in the cat's mouth. And that's about it at first. You're like, what the hell? Uh, it takes out whatever these radiation police guys, whoever they are, they're dead. <laughs> and then the scientists are like, did you just see what happened? And then the other scientists is like, don't talk about that. We got to kill this cat. And and the scientist there is played by Graydon Clark. He's that's our director. So the the dark haired guy. Really? Yeah, that's Graydon Clark. And uh, and like I said, he's a former actor. And if wow. you watch a lot of his films, he's usually probably one of the better actors in the entire film. Uh, basically, uh, where were we? Cat barfs. <laughs> Cat barfs. Cat barfs. Are you recording? Is- Make sure recording. Yes, we're recording both, uh, yeah. both things are recording. So, cat barfs instead of a hairball, barfs up a rat and runs yes. away, escapes for the, and he's, he's escapes. He, he lives for another day. <laughs> okay, then the movie. everybody off on the way with his paws the best he can. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't tell what it was. That's all I have to say about it. Like, I was intrigued. I was like, what? Yeah. What is in this? You weren't expected that, um, were you? <laughs> Uh, twice the cat right there, you know, in one. Uh, then it cuts to our uh, our main females on spring break. Uh, Suzanne? <laughs> Susan? Yeah, we have, let me look it back up. It was Rachel and Suzanne, I think. Suzanne, that's right, okay. 
Um, well, okay, they're two girls on spring break. They don't really have anywhere to stay. So, right, you know, they're just kind of wandering around. Uh, they wander into a hotel because they want to take a rest. They've been walking around trying to find a place to stay. And that's when we are introduced to our sleazy, sleazy mustache man, <laughs> millionaire. <laughs> yes, there you go. One of our three bigger names, even though I don't know who this one is. I have never uh, <laughs> heard of Alex Corda, <laughs> but he got $25,000 apparently. <laughs> Good for that guy, you know? And, you know, he got to uh, harass these young girls in this film, which must have been fun, I assume. Uh, <laughs> uh, so he he makes his move. He sees these girls have no place to stay. And being the uh, rich man he is, he's like, hey, you can come stay with me on my yacht. That'd be perfect. Uh, you know, and these girls... I don't know why they'd be okay with it, but they end up being okay with it. Yeah. They're like, yeah, yeah, we'll definitely do that. <laughs> they go to, like, lunch with the guy for a minute, and then uh, their lunch is interrupted by uh, his the man's business partner. Uh, Walter is his name, I believe? Mm-hmm. Walter, yeah. But the business um, partner's not Walter. Walter. Walter Graham is the Mr. Sleaze. Hi, I'm, I'm oh, Mr. Sleaze. Oh, 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 yeah. Walter Sleaze. Wall, okay. Because uh, remember, his nickname was Wall Street Wally or something like oh, that. Oh, yeah. That's what they knew him as. Or Wall Street like... Walter. That was it. Are you talking about Wall Wally. Street Walter? I got him by my <laughs> Joan Jet <Jett> poster. <laughs> Walmart Walter? Wow. Walmart Walter? <laughs> He's like, hey, young ladies. It'll be purely innocent. Okay. Come to my boat. Hey, there's nothing wrong with the 45-year-old man asking college girls onto his boat. It's part of life. <laughs> Every good yeah, young little, little. college co-ed wants to party with the 45-year-old porno mustache guy. <laughs> it is the 80s, you know. <laughs> I don't know. I lived in the 80s, and I just don't remember that many... And, and I, I'll tell you, I'll be honest with you. I, I remember, like, when I was younger, when I stopped dating younger women, was I was in New York and I'm sitting at the bar, and I'm like thinking, man, I'm gonna be the only dude with this 19 year old chick, right? And I go down there, and there's like 50 or 60 year old guys with 19 year old girls. And I'm like, what a bunch of douchebags! <laughs> right what then, and I thought, money bags. Yeah, I just thought to myself. You know, I'm going to start dating 35-year-old women from now on. This is, this is so stupid looking. Because I, I just cannot see me chivalred up with some young girl. At, you do. You do look like a flipping douchebag. I don't know how else to describe it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's like, Going out to dinner with your daughter, huh? Exactly. Oh, yeah. This is daughter today. <laughs> or it's just like, like with uh, Take Kid on. It's Daddy Sunday. It's like. Yeah, <laughs> it's like yeah. I, I I dropped kid off one time, and no, I was so, no, I take it back. Somebody just picked me up, and somebody, goes, oh wow, look at that! I said, hey, that's my stepson you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, place, man. Quick. I didn't know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I stopped time my test. All right, where were we? Okay, so Walter douchebag. And then his his uh, George Kennedy enters the room and Clue Gallagher. Now let's talk about Clue Gallagher's teeth for a moment. And like now, did anybody <laughs> else saw Return of the Living Dead? Yeah, I've seen it. Okay, okay. So he's in Return of the Living Dead, and that's really probably one of the reasons why he got this film so quickly. Um, the he's like, oh, well, I'm a movie star now. <laughs> Here's your first row, uninvited. A cat. Well, I just got finished fighting zombies. Sure, why not? But the the, the uh, teeth, which I have no idea whose idea it was, uh, his son made those teeth. That was something that his <laughs> son was in uh, makeup, and so his son made those teeth for him. And I and I can see this because, like I said, I think Graydon Clark is probably an easygoing guy and just likable, and and I can see Clue going there. You know, my son makes teeth. He can make me really funny teeth, and I think that would make the character more alive. And 
Graydon's like, you know, that that sounds like a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> Funny teeth. Let's go with it. All right. So I'm done with the teeth. And uh, George Kennedy, Clue Gallagher show up, business partners. And uh, his name, what was uh, the uh, Clue Gallagher's character? And I want to say Walter. Man. Albert. He was Albert. Yeah, Albert. Uh, Albert. That's not Albert. Albert was the drunk, like, henchman guy. Yeah, that's Clue Gallagher. Albert was Clue Gallagher. Really? Yeah. And oh. Then George Kennedy was Mike Harvey. He was the top list. He was oh, your okay. he was your get it done guy and all that. So 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 basically they cock block Walter at the dinner table. <laughs> and uh, yeah. so let's just continue where were we on that? So Oh man. Okay, yeah, they say, "Hey, we've got some business here. You can't be Hanging out with these dumb broads. And he's like, you couldn't have gave me ten more minutes, you know? Damn. That's uh, all anyways. <laughs> Walter needs is ten minutes. Great. Right. Yeah, that's so all glad. he needs. And, and you got to remember, this is before Viagra, folks. Keep that in mind. Before Viagra. <laughs> it was all popped collars and salmon and baby blue shirts. And no Viagra. <laughs> Walter, okay, all right. So it's they have to go to the so. yacht. <laughs> they end up at this yacht, his yacht. Walter's oh, fancy, oh, before fancy we yacht. get to the yacht, though, remember the girls pick up the dudes. Well, oh, that's, yeah, that's right. True. That's right. You're wrong. You're wrong. you're right. You're or did right. they you're whack right. the guy right, first? Because you you forgot about the I forgot about the whacking guy. Okay, go back to the whacking the guy off. See, I totally forgot about whacking yeah. the guy off. <laughs> Wait, Speaking what? Speaking of I whacking the guy off, that. this is such a soft core porno like B yeah. horror movie to me. Like, <laughs> <laughs> it's very <laughs> tasteful. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's it's like for it's. I was so glad because, like I said, you can't watch Wacko and like. Feel clean. You can watch this film and kind of like, oh yeah, that's mom and dad in a bikini. So what, you know? But uh, you know, it's very yeah. innocent. It's not like where you feel dirty. You know what I'm saying? That kind of thing. Yeah, they so keep it light. They, they do. keep it light. It's it's you you don't feel like you got to shower thirty times after seeing <laughs> it. Like wacko. Oh gosh, that film. That you film makes me feel dirty. Yourself, I had to shower a few times after this movie. Yeah, your cat. Uh, oh, uh, Jinx was probably going, oh my gosh. Oh. <laughs> yeah, Jinx was a fan of this film for, for the terrible cat loop sound effects. She like came looking every time. Okay, so the whacking, it's not a hot tub, it's a jacuzzi, right? So we got a jacuzzi. Jacuzzi on a, on a yacht. yacht. Okay, so that's where we're at, so... Uh, okay. Well, I don't there? think we even get like this guy's name. He's yeah. just like a one of their business associates that's uh, in with the uh, what did they say the FCC? Because I believe that's what like that is that is right. Isn't that the, you had the SEC? The that. SEC is you know they insider insider trading is like their biggest thing. They uncover and i make a joke about it because sec also stands for southeastern conference which is like a, you know the big football conference but the thing is sec that's what they do is they you know stock exchange commission which basically if you do something dirty at wall street you don't want the sec to investigate because that means insider trading you know like you watch trading places which uh, was before insider trading was illegal and so when that started becoming illegal oh my gosh people were more uh you know scared and like these apparently they've done some insider trading and and embezzling let's say taking dipping into the funds of people's retirement so if they leave the country they don't have to worry about it so but the sec so this guy's gonna rat on them that's what they're afraid this guy's gonna rat on them so. mm-hmm. So what happened? And he's already asking for more money, so they, they can tell, you know. So, you know, I love the guy's reaction when he realizes they're about to whack him. Like, oh, oh, no, please, don't, don't. 
please don't, what are you doing? Huh? And they also use the same like audio twice <laughs> of him. Like I didn't yeah. even notice that. That's so funny. Yeah, you'll have yeah, to. Yeah, he was so the entire time. He was like, I'm so loyal. I'm, I'm your best friend, man. I am your best friend, basically. I was like, uh. Well, the worst thing is, too, they're and- yelling at this guy, and it's like he goes, what? You're going to kill me? That comes out of nowhere. <laughs> You're going to kill me? And then, you know, like, Walter's like, there's this thing called blackmail. You ever seen it? You ever seen blackmail? <laughs> you ever seen a blackmail before? <laughs> exactly. it, and it's really big. <laughs> and then, and then Walter, Walter, no, uh, Walter, Albert, of all people, the, the weakest yes. character has to take the guy down. And, which is, which, I love how they slow mo that scene just to try and make it more like I don't know dramatic, but it, it gave it kind of the opposite effect. Gonna kill me. And then the thing uh, is, so they drown this guy. Yeah, and and uh, something I also want to add. Not only did Clue Gallagher's son come up with the teeth, Clue Gallagher. For some reason, came up with the shivering, and they kept it in the yeah. After scene. he kills him, yeah. yeah. And mm. I don't know what that was all about. And somebody said, "Here's what I think it is: is I guess it's supposed to be interpreted as like alcohol shakes. Is that what we're? Yeah, maybe uh, because either there's... that or that's why he turns to alcohol because he can't, you know, handle. Yeah. That's the only <laughs> way, thing I could think about because other than that, we're you know everybody else is thinking this is a heart condition. And because, like, Walter's like, look at Albert. He's shaking. <laughs> that was the funny thing. <laughs> Laughing at Look at this nerd. Look, Albert's shaking. He's about to have a heart attack. <laughs> it's like, George, like, shut up. I don't want to bury another guy. <laughs> and then that was my other thing. And Albert, if you can clean up this mess, I'd be really appreciative. And you come back for snacks, okay? <laughs> <laughs> I was like, sure thing, buff. I'll, 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 I'll clean up the mess and then we'll go in and have something to drink. <laughs> and, and true story, they said the, the wine on this was actually grape juice, that there was no drinking on the set. And I say, horse crap. <laughs> yeah, maybe not maybe on screen. You have to anybody. drink on this set in order to be able to, like, go down with it. <laughs> if you look at, uh, uh, Alex Cord in this film. I'm sorry. There's that dude had a few, <laughs> a little bit to make it through each little scene. And, you know, I mean, I'm sure Graydon could like confirm that because I believe Alex was drinking a little bit to get through this. He was like, man, and last year I was doing Airwolf. <laughs> All right. So, all right. So we whacked a guy off. We and- whacked that guy. And now, now we get into picking up the boys, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So the girls, now that they're going to be going and staying on the yacht, um, run into some boys, which, you know, I'm sure the whole plan being on spring break was to find, you know, some people to party with. Uh, and I thought it was so crazy that they just immediately, like first thing, talking to these guys invites them onto someone else's boat. <laughs> It's like, hey, we got invited to this thing. You should definitely come with us. <laughs> right? As if as and, if it wasn't like completely obvious that this crazy, creepy old got rich guy with the yacht is like, hey, come aboard so I can you know and then they're yeah. like, Hey, let's bring these boys too. Yeah, and which, and, you know, they want the protection. I get that. Yeah, well that that was another thing too. That's really was weird, is it's like that's the reason why these girls become very unlikable to me. First of all, you're you're hurry in a hurry to get on the boat with the creepy guy that you don't know, but you're also gonna invite two boys you've never met in your entire life to come in just in case he gets too forward, you'll be there. You don't even know these guys. These guys might be <laughs> into that. You know, like they could be Yeah, now there's going, four people to worry about. Yeah, they could be in that could be their fetish, you know. It's like, you know what I like? Watching old guys 
hit on young girls. Man, that turns me on. Yeah, bruh. <laughs> <laughs> it's the 80s. Yeah. <laughs> Especially rich dudes. Because that one dude had Tubular. this thing for Walter, like, Wall Street, Walter! Oh, yeah. Wall Street, Walter! Yeah. Oh. He couldn't care less these women just invited him on a cruise. Wall Street, He's Walter! Like, I'm, I'm gonna, gonna meet Walter, I can't believe it! I'll put on a dress and serve him drinks, I don't care! <laughs> you know, I was like... I mean, he was just, like, so in love with the dude, it was like, so, I mean, that was creepy enough, and... Mm-hmm. And then the girls, yeah, that 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 just to me is sloppy writing. <laughs> who would be like? Who would even be like? Wow, I look up to this guy who was on Wall Street. Well, no, it's like I was telling you, like he had a poster of Joan Jett on his wall, and he's got a picture of Wall Street Walter and Ronald Reagan. Right? <laughs> You're a teenage boy on spring break. I don't understand how a teenage boy, yeah, he'd be like, oh, Joan Jett, or like, oh, all these other, like, you know, bikini babes. Not, Wall Street Walter, oh my god. <laughs> and, and then yeah, I, I think it. he was like the sports star one, too, even, so like... Great. <laughs> yeah one one had a one had a wrestling contract or no wrestling wrestling scholarship. One had the thing for science, and I think the other guy was just a dropout. I don't know. It was how it worked out. <laughs> <laughs> it was like, what about you? Look, you know, I'm just here because this is spring break and there's babes here. A true story. I don't think uh, the way I understand it, talking and listening to Graydon Clark's interview, this was not filmed in Florida, even though there is a Florida license plate. Oh, wait a minute. Yeah, you know, before we talk even about the boys, uh, did we mention about the old pickup truck scene? Can we talk about that? Oh, oh, where the cat? Yes, okay. Yes, that is the best. Part. Okay. <laughs> Uh, yeah, this I definitely is where we realize noticed. that the budget is pretty low on this film. <laughs> yes, yes. So we get to finally see like the cat, or what I should say is inside the cat a little bit better. Okay, in this in this scene, and uh, it looks somewhat like a, an otter or seal to me, might I add, and. A uh, without a kudos is what I on the saying. puppeteer. <laughs> kudos on the puppeteer because I could see his like his invisible hand. arm, his hand working the puppet. So <laughs> shout outs to him. Um, also, and by the okay, way, I do puppets, they, so I can I can attest to this. So <laughs> that okay, is a puppet. <laughs> I'll I, I do my I'll do um, my I'll do my CSI Miami. Because you know why? Because it was a puppet. <laughs> the Muppets did it. The Muppets did it. Time of death. <laughs> All right, okay, so, so they they crash their truck, which might I add, while they're driving it or before the cat like attacks the, the, the two drivers in this truck, um, it's a different model truck right. than whenever they – then they cut to a different – yeah, after it like wrecks. I, I have it's a, a different vehicle this. completely. Yeah, I, I have a theory on this. First of all, let, let's let me go over this truck and why it's so important. Because first of all, it it, it says this is a low budget film. All right, so number one, <laughs> what happens to to make this cat, I guess, more menacing and to get him from point A to point B? So we choose a truck, and apparently, a guy at a service station is feeding the cat with milk, and then the cat is drinking the milk, and these dudes show up. Knock the service guy out, take the guy's keys, and it's like they had to have an old pickup truck. And it's so badly shot that you actually think the old, the dudes drove up in the pickup truck and then stole the pickup truck again. But the way I'm supposed to understand is they're beating up the service guy to get the keys to get to the register, and I guess they got some money out and went back to their pickup truck. They get in the pickup truck, the cat gets back into the truck, because these dudes <laughs> killed the dude who provided milk. The cat jumps through the window, crashes the vehicle, which is actually probably stock footage from old Graydon Clark film back in the 70s. So we switch from this <laughs> truck, going off the clip to, to uh, – and then on top of add insult to injury where we see the puppeteer's hand coming out, attacking <laughs> the people. 
To add insult to injury, they couldn't find a sound effect for a truck going off a cliff, so they just add the glass sound effect looping like three times. So you hear crash, glass, <laughs> crash, glass, crash, glass. What it needed after that was the truck to explode, but we didn't get that, uh, you know, great no ending Michael like Bay that. action here. Yeah, and it's kind of, but we get the cat there to the port, which is supposed to be Fort Lauderdale, Florida, which is not. It's actually a uh, pier dock outside of L.A. there, but uh, we're supposed to believe this is Fort Lauderdale, Florida, and this is spring break. And so there we have the young ladies Picking up the boys. <laughs> yes. Okay. And we've gone Picking over the boys. <laughs> yes. So like, They're going to go to the cruise now. Yeah. I was going to say, so the next scene after we, we convince the boys to, you know, take a cruise with us in Wall Street, Walter. Um, Wall Street, Walter. Did you say Wall Street, Walter? I know I, him. I, I really like this scene because it's just so like they, I, they walk, they're walking on the deck and they're like, okay, here's the boat. We're getting to go on the boat. And then they're like, oh, look at this chest. Let's open the chest. <gasps> a cat. Yeah. Because that's where you find cats. Yeah. And well, then, they heard it then, meowing, which is another loop. And even though the cat doesn't move his mouth, he keeps on meowing, which is wonderful. I know. <laughs> it's like meow. 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 Yeah. It was so, oh my gosh, worst cat sounds ever. And she's just like, look at this cat. It's my cat now. Like, this is my cat. And everyone yeah. was just like, bet, it's her cat. Let's go. Let's go on this cruise with this cat. <laughs> Great <laughs> idea. Bring a cat on a ship, by the, like, by the way. I just. I heard that cats are lucky on ships. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So then we get to the ship. And Walter, you know, says, wait a minute, there's more male genitalia on this thing now. Yeah. There's three <laughs> times as much. I don't know if I can go with that. And, of course, we do introduce the young female captain as captain. well. Captain. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Who is as, who's as cute as a button and she wants the ship back or something. But they, yeah, she doesn't like have a crew. Daddies. Yeah. She doesn't have a crew, but the SEC is coming. Uh. Albert lets him know the SEC is coming. The SEC is coming, so let's move this puppy. So he tries to convince them to go, and they can't because they don't have a crew. So it just happens that these able-bodied young men can be the crew now. And so so pretty good writing there to try to justify, you know, Three extra male genitalia, and so now we, we've got we've got George Kennedy, Clue Gallagher, uh, Sleazy Walter, and three college boys and three two college girls and a captain. So that's all that's on this ship. So, and we've got a full crew. And again, like I said, she she is she then Walter wants to get rid of the cat, right? Yeah, hates cats. Yeah, and the scientist was like, I heard that cats are really good luck on a boat. And he says that two times. And it's like, so remember that, cats are good luck on a boat. And so then, of course, Walter's like, no, I don't care. It's my boat. He's going to have to go. And then it's like Susan says, well, yeah, but, you know, and all this and blah, blah, blah. And the cat, and he says, all right, but you owe me, Suzanne, and I never forget. <laughs> Most weird, like yeah, that was way crazy. The I implication. Know, like, I immediately wanted to just like pause the movie and take a shower. <laughs> <laughs> you can bring the oh, cat, well, kiddo, sure. but you owe me. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll leave the cat at home. <laughs> yeah, well, cat you, staying home. You know, I, I used to tell kid all the time. I said, "You owe me," and the kid was like, "What? I want some kiddo giggles. Give me some kiddo giggles. I get my, I want my giggles. Give me my giggles. Let me hear some giggles. Giggle, giggle. Give me giggle, some kiddo giggles." giggles. <laughs> oh hell, they left. Cracks whip. Where'd you go? Oh no. 
Ran away, I think. Ran away, ran away. I I guess we could continue (laughs) until they come back. (laughs) Walter! All right. We've got Sly Walter now with his ladies and his new crew. Demanded giggles and we drop, he says. Wow. (laughs) Give me giggles. (laughs) All right, so. And with the SEC coming, that hurries up this plot a little bit because that's the thing. We got to get to the cat barfing and attacking people. So we have to SEC, which is the funny, the funniest thing is watching Albert come. The SEC's coming. The SEC's coming. The SEC's coming. We got to move the boat. Master dinner, Master. We got to get going here. <laughs> and he's like flapping his ears. All right, let's go. And so I can't, uh, where we're at right now, is it? And the boy, they have the little party and then the boys have to wash dishes and stuff, I guess. Is that where we're at? Remember the... Mm -hmm. Immediately, they like make each of them assigned to be like the maid, the dish bus boy or whatever. Yeah, George Kennedy gives Uh, them a a thing. He's like, you're you're the cook, you're the defense, and boy, you meet me in my cabin in two minutes in a dress. You know, it's like... (laughs) (laughs) Okay, you pray yourself up now. Yeah, and you better smell nice too. <laughs> uh, and then, uh, yeah, the the boys are pretty much just about to tell him to go f off. You know, hey. Yeah. And then the girls are like, "Of course, we'll do whatever you want." Just you know, that's their entire character is these manipulative, like. Yeah, because Walter like, wanted their giggles. bodies. That's all he wants: girl, g- girly giggles. <laughs> Greedy than that, Walter is. I think is is this because uh, okay we get the scene and I guess we establish the captain a little bit like like she's important or something like that and then supposed we, to be yeah and you know to try to establish what would you say some emotional connection with her because I mean she's I mean she's a pretty good character I mean she's not that bad of actress I've never heard of her I'm sure she's done stuff before I mean she didn't no, get her twenty five thousand you know over. yeah. I just remember those butt She was the most attractive of all the girls, I would want to say. You think she was attractive? And, you know, wore the most clothes, too, so. Yeah. Maybe that's why I thought she was the most attractive. (laughs) The worst thing, you know what I hate when I watch this kind of hair on these girls is you go from (laughs) that girls look good to, oh, girlfriend, you did not. I cannot believe, oh, no, you did not. That hair, oh, really? You know, it's like I was at a convention, I'll never forget. And I, you know, I was handing out my uh, cards once, and one girl was like, I don't know about this coconut daddy thing. And the first thing that, instead of being mean coconut daddy, I was like, Oh, girl, please get a hold of yourself. You're not all that, okay? <laughs> that's what's going through my And that's exactly what I did with this 80s hair. I was like, Oh, you got to be kidding me. The hairstylist in me was like coming out. It was like, <laughs> Oh, no. Oh, no. That, your face and that hair, no. It's not happening. I'm sorry. It just, you, your hairstylist was wrong. I mean, I don't know how much you paid, but I go get my money back. That's what I would have said. Man, you're savage. Well, I'm sorry, you got to be. It's a movie. (laughs) Yeah, you gotta be. It's like, you want fame, girl. You can't handle it. When a Lolita on Tumblr tells you that you're fugly, you better get ready. That's all I can say. (laughs) You have to prepare. You're not ready for fame, and you're not ready for that hairstyle. Okay, I'll take time to say it. White people dancing. Can we talk about this for a moment? They've gotten better over time, Sean. You just got to give them time. All right, okay. I I will say this, okay, because there's a guy (laughs) that, you know, I grew up, you know, watch as a musician, and he's releasing some of his old footage in the 80s in the concerts. And people are in the crowd doing the waving the arms thing. And I was like, yeah, I do remember that a little bit. And it was god-awful because what was this thing, Swing with the Arms, and that was it, and... And then that song that they played over again, uh, I cannot think of it. What was it? It was, uh, it's, um, oh my gosh, what was that song? One more time, we're gonna play this song one more time. 
one more time you're gonna get sick of it before this movie is over with and it is awful and then you got the girls with the doing the thing and it's like one oh yeah oh it's awful I kind of like that song though by the time I watch this uh you know the fourth time well there was probably (laughs) subliminal messages going on in there (laughs) Like this song or Walter. <laughs> I'm actually Walter. listening to it right now. Really? The song? With these headphones. <laughs> yes. No. One <laughs> more time. We're gonna play the heart party line. I don't know. It was just yeah. terrible. I'm gonna watch young people have a good time on my, on my boat. Right. Cause that's what it felt like. Yeah, I mean, basically we're trying to establish these characters. We, we try to establish the captain's likable. The, the scientist guy is likable. All these things. The smart are, boy. Yeah. And, and for some the, reason. Yeah, biologist guy. Yeah, the biologist. So they have lack of crew. They have the party. They have the white people dancing. And who do they decide? Who do they decide to, to man the ship? <laughs> yeah, in lieu of the captain, the female captain, they've got Albert, <laughs> drunk Albert, and and in the oh, end yeah. and he gets <laughs> Captain Albert at your service, baby. Captain Albert. <laughs> oh my gosh, that that is, and and I'll go back to cringy and feel sorry for people. That is, <gasps> I do. I never felt sorry for an actor than that scene, and I almost felt like <laughs> it was improv, and it was like. Uh, Clue, could you act like a drunk guy? And what would a drunk guy do? And it was like driving the ship, and he decides to sing uh, uh, one of the, which is a good thing they chose this song because they knew it was in public domain and they had to pay any money for it. So he's he's singing, uh, what is the name of that song? Why I used to sing the coming of the glory of the <laughs> and it was like of the Lord, yeah, and it's like, yeah. and because it, cause it's in public domain, and you know they don't have to pay any money. It was like of all songs you could have picked, you know, that's in public domain. You know, I was like, uh, <laughs> he's but, like, this one goes out to you, Captain. <laughs> 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 She's behind him. <laughs> you are drunk. You are right. <laughs> Oh my gosh, that reminds me of Kiddo when back when they were playing Robin. And it's like that that guy goes, "You're drunk," and Kiddo's, like, "You're right." <laughs> and 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 Ash is just dying laughing. <laughs> I, I remember that. I kind of because you hear Ash just laughing that laugh. <laughs> like, you're he goes, "You're drunk." <laughs> It was <laughs> a little bit. I don't think you were drunk. I think you just smelled of booze. I think that's what he smelled. But <clears throat> booze and desperation. All right. So, um... oh boy. <laughs> <laughs> you had fun. That's all that mattered. All right. So, um... well, I mean, I, I mean, I'll be honest with you, like. I've seen littler people uh, not handle alcohol as much as Kiddo can. Um, Like, smaller people. Alright, so, um... (laughs) So, Albert... Let's get... Okay, what is the deal here? Kiddo, touch on Albert. Albert's drinking, so... Oh, boy. This is our first kill. This is our first... No, it's our first kill on the boat. No, second kill if you Um. count the SEC guy, so... What's going on? So basically, we've you've been we've been discovered by the captain, and uh, uh, Albert basically essentially gets. She's essentially like, "You're drunk, go home." So he's like, <laughs> "Hey, you know." Like, I live here, though. <laughs> yeah, like. So we stumble in around the side of the boat, and he's like, "Oh, okay, I'm I'm drunk, and I'm walking around trying to find my way back to my room, or maybe he just had to take a walk and sober up. I don't remember, but." We're walking, and all of a sudden, we get the dreaded cat noises. The same cat noises on repeat. Yup, yup. We know what's coming. 
Oh yeah. He's like, oh, oh yeah. hi, little pussy. Hey. <laughs> so hi. unfortunately, you he want is some wine? First victim. Yeah. And he spits, on, he spits wine the on cat. the cat. He spits wine on the cat too. <gasps> That was so mean. I know. I don't the know cat, why you saw the cat's face. Like, to die after that. <laughs> I mean, no so. cats were spit on in the making of this film. <laughs> they did die in this film. We'll get into that. Uh, <laughs> but, oh, no. Yeah, so the cat ends up biting him, and he does the whole thing where, like, his veins start popping out, and he's bleeding from his everywhere, and, like... Uh, ends up, uh, flipping over the side of the boat. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And yep. then, uh, so after that, we have, basically, we realize, okay, he's gone. We're looking, I think it's the captain is looking for him and is like, where, where is he? We can't keep moving on. We need to, you know, send out the search team, like, call in and be like, we need some help, the stress signals. And our, uh... Our Wall Street Walter is like, no can do, sweet cheat. Yeah. I gotta yeah. go. I already my knew he mile. fell. Yeah. yeah. Well, and that's the thing is, too, because they're running from the SEC. And <laughs> the SEC's coming. The SEC's coming. Don't forget them. So, <clears throat> so yeah, and so convinces her to, like, Let's not go any further. The, the the best thing about this scene, but the funniest part that cracks me up every time, is uh, uh, she goes, "Well, we gotta find him. I'm not gonna leave a man behind." And then George Kenny said, "It's no big deal. He couldn't swim." And then she's like, <laughs> "Yeah, yeah." So they were like, "Well, he's dead anyway." Essentially, is how they were just like. And then she's like, "Oh, yeah, that's different. If he's already dead, <laughs> that's different." Yeah, he's probably shark food at this time, so, you know, what can you do about it? <laughs> she just wanted the boat. Yeah, she That's did. fine. One of the boat. My favorite like, last lines of Albert were, I didn't ask to be captain. He's like, I didn't ask to be captain, dies. He wasn't captain anyways, might I add. But. <laughs> well, and you know, the funny thing, too, is I have to go back. Uh, one of the things I noticed watching this, too, is uh, when Walter falls off the boat, George Kennedy, it's like his spider sense tingles and he looks out the window, you know, and he yeah. gets up and he leaves out the door to see what's going on. And he doesn't find Walter out there. But the funniest thing, if you watch that, you'll see that he's playing backgammon with the scientist guy. And it's like the scientist mm-hmm. guy is like, what? You interrupt her game? Why? <laughs> <laughs> we were just, we were connecting and backgammon, you know? And it's like, it's so funny. Like, it's like, and the look on the guy's face, like, huh? <laughs> and it's like, <laughs> My spider sense is tingling. I have to go check this out. You know, he's like, he walks out. I mean, watch it. But I have two there. years for my doctorate. Come back. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> we were playing backgammon, man. <laughs> no one interrupts the backgammon game. Maybe checkers or poker, but not a backgammon game. I don't care if anyone's dying. So, um, after all that mess, so, uh, you know, which, you know, things have now changed because they don't want anybody else to know that Albert's gone, but they kind of would figure that out with him not showing up. But, mm-hmm. um, you know, we get into, uh, um, you know, after Albert is killed alone, uh, you know, then they find the blood and, uh, the scientist guy does, and that's where he has to get a sextant. Uh, which is X S E X T A N T to use as a microscope because they don't have a microscope on the boat and observe that Albert's blood cell was abnormally high. Blood don't do this. Blood don't jump like this. It's like blood's always, hey, I'm blood. But apparently the blood is contagious, which, which is reason why you should handle it with your bare hands. Um, yeah, right. I noticed that as well. I was like, well, I don't know, man. If you're like playing around with these specimens with just your hands, and he's like, oh, this is bad. Yeah. You know, no one should be touching this stuff. It's bad for you. 
You know what I'm saying? Well, he hasn't this... graduated yet, so. <laughs> that's, true. That's, true. that's the reason why he, the reason. That's the reason why he lost his scholarship to Harvard. So. <laughs> so he did miss his uh. death as accidental. Nevertheless, he inspects the blood sample with his sextant and observes that Albert's blood is abnormally unusual. So, um, can we, t- can I tackle the rape? Oh man. You want me Don't to tackle? tackle. Can I tackle the rape? <laughs> no scene? tackling. Okay, tackle? tackle. Okay, I'm gonna tackle the rape scene. Just don't pin. Yeah, Just... cause I wanna try to be as sensitive as possible. Let's say right now that we here at the Coconut Daddy Productions do not, do not ever condone behavior of this nature. Wow. One of our young ladies is exercising. Walter decides that I've got to have me in her. So why she's exercising and enforces himself upon the young lady. And then our other dude who we don't know what he's going to college for. He just shows up. So our bro. Just, yeah. Call our bro. Yeah. Bob bro. bro. I mean, he does. He goes bro on the guy. Yo, what's up, man? What you doing? Whoa. Hey, dude. Yeah, yeah, dude. Not cool. Not cool. <laughs> And Walter's like, man, you just mind your own business. I got this, you know. And it's like, oh, no, bro. You can't be doing that. So he, like, goes out there. And he goes, pushes Walter off of him. And the next thing you know, Georgia shows up. <laughs> shoots him in the arm. <laughs> Wonderful, like, by the way. Yeah, like, that is <laughs> top tier what you do in the situation is you start shooting people. And, and I can't help it. Every time I see that scene, because it's like, push off, George goes, <laughs> and you just can't help but laugh, because it's like, he just like comes out of nowhere, shoots the guy. I was like, and then, <laughs> he's been wanting to. He wanted an excuse the whole movie, you know, so he's. And he was in the closet waiting. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. And it, it just, George is Polishing like, his gun. Like, One of these days I'm going to get to use this gun. I'm going to shoot somebody. <laughs> <laughs> Shoots a kid in the arm. Also, and okay. It, and so it, it's it, like, it he brushes the guy's off. arm. Yeah, he, and it brushes him off like, hey, it's only a flesh wound. You know, what are you worried about? <laughs> he shoots him in front of a window. It grazes him, but, you know, the window don't break. Yeah. Might I add. <laughs> so that's good. Yeah, it's really smart, George. <laughs> but it uh, stirs up uh, one of our uh, second attacks or third attacks or fourth attacks with the cat. The cat is hiding yes, yes. underneath the bed and attacks uh, poor George in the foot, in the ankle, and bites him. And he's uh, quickly wounded by this bat because he's got the venom and venom inside of him now. And um, Yes. And so you got this throbbing makeup that they use with, uh, you know, those uh, bubble, air bubble uh, makeup, you know, they, they, you know, on the side, they'd be pumping that, making that do like that. So it looks like it's, uh, you know, back in those days, we didn't have CGI. So it's like, how do we show that someone is infected? Oh, yeah, the air bubble makeup. There we go. Oh, he's infected. It's pulsing. There you go. Which yes, we yes. thought that was neat in those days. It's basically some dude back there pumping, <laughs> using one of those heart blood pressure medicine things. And so we get to see the cat again, so yeah. that's cool. Yeah, exactly. It's probably one of the best attacks in the film. You know, it's... I've noticed that like the puppet changes like proportions. Yeah. Each time it's like show, it'll be like a different like creature. Yeah, it'll be <laughs> so small, it's like, medium, and large. Small, and I don't know if bigger. that's part of his uh, thing or whatever but but you know like I said we're getting to the point where yeah things have changed now Mike is infected and uh, mm-hmm. he's critically wounded Mike soon begins having these horrible spasm and he, he just dies and then they and then they have the famous ship throw the dude overboard and uh, now we're with Lance and Bobby who uh, decide to engage in pre-coil to foreplay. So, yeah, <laughs> so, yeah we get this uh, softcore porno-like intro, or at least that's where it was going for me. And then he's talking about not being able to feel his hand or like even his like arm. And 
I, I guess that's from the gunshot, you know. And so they're, like, making light of it, you know, having, like, this, I guess, you know, foreplay or whatever. And they're like, oh, you know, I might not be able to feel my hand, but, uh, you know, what, uh, what I can feel? <laughs> and uh, <laughs> she uh, goes to pull the blanket back from over him. And then there's the, there's the cat or whatever's inside the cat just gnawing at his hand, and he wasn't able to feel it the whole time. <laughs> and this is the, like the smallest the creature has looked to me so far. So I'm just like, it is a, there's a rat in your bed. And look, uh, there's like fingers the just laying on me. the bed. I got the poison in me. It's in my blood. It's in my blood. It's in my blood. <laughs> Uh, so he runs, he's running all over the ship, goes to the edge, he's screaming about it, he's like, did you see that? Oh my god! It bit me! And, uh, he proceeds to jump to his death over the side of the ship, and also takes, um, the girl with him that was trying to keep him from jumping. Yeah, I mean, that, and it's like, it knocks out two in one thing, and it's like... And you know the thing is too, I can see the cat when they're both falling off going like, hey, you can't blame me for that. <laughs> that is just pure stupidity yeah. on your part. And you know. <laughs> Yeah, he was angered by your premarital intercourse. <laughs> he was he was mad. <laughs> this cat has morals, okay? But I'm saying the girl fell off with him, but that wasn't his fault, you know. Like, oh no, she had every reason to stay on the ship yeah, from exactly. what I saw. And uh Yeah, so And then of course we get <laughs> uh <laughs> we get the craziest uh uh thing with uh Corey, the other character. Uh this is what's silly. Can we talk about uh I don't know if y'all ever trapped animals or any of y'all have got any experience with that? Yeah. Yeah, but I'm saying raccoons, right? There are certain animals you have to place, you know, stuff out. But with a cat, you could pretty much take one bowl and put it out in the middle of the floor, (laughs) and it would come there. It's not like I mean, we watched him early go to a bowl of milk, but he's like strategically placing, you know, the poison on each little pipe <laughs> he's trying to impress Walter yeah yeah that's all that. and that was another thing too he said, <laughs> I'm gonna go get Walter cause he's like he, and he's, and he's kind of like trying to make a deal with Walter cause he's still got that you know fanboy thing with Walter you know hey Walter what do you want to do after this <laughs> can I be your best friend <laughs> you free after this cruise Walter yeah man will you take me out somewhere because he knows Walter has money, I guess, too. That was another thing. I think that was kind of the storyline that Corey wasn't like the, had the best intentions. Um, and of course, with his character, uh, it gets even worse because, uh, you know, they lock, uh, him up because, well, well he, here's the thing, too. We got it because I've skipped ahead is during this time, the captain, you know, after George Kennedy dies, realizes, you know, they need to do the right thing and call for help, right? Mm-hmm. And, of course, the engines have, uh, have totally shut down. And so um, she tries to call for help. But Walter's like, oh, no, you don't. You don't do that because, like, if you do, I'll shoot that girl right between the eyes, you know. And the girl's like, no, don't shoot me, don't shoot me. And then somehow they get out of that and... Then she she tells him, you know, take the gun and shoot his balls off. And then they lock uh, him up in the room. And that's when Corey convinces them that they need Walter and gives him the gun and all this kind of mess. But while Corey's trying to poison the, uh, you know, cat, he dies from a steam blast that kills him. <laughs> Which is- yeah, that was, that was terrible. <laughs> and, and through this... Uh, there's this the strength of like the cat is torturing and playing with them by poisoning the food and there's this uh dialogue that's involved in it because you what you get left is you get rachel and martin 
uh, Susan are left. Those are the only ones left. Is Corey's dead? You know, after uh, you know he the the steam blast, and you've got them left. There's only like champagne and cornflakes is what they got left, which is yeah. basically yeah. <laughs> which is and they say, well, we gotta like you know ration this out and susan's like totally freaking out and they can't touch the food because it's poison and infects it and to prove that the food's poison susan goes downstairs and eats it that was Uh. the stupidest scene honestly she was like i knew he was lying to me and then i was like why would why would he be lying to you about poison? going crazy from hunger that quick yeah that'd be me buddy if I don't eat yeah. a snack, same like, day. Like, yeah. I knew you was hiding the uh, pocky. The pocky's poison. <laughs> no, it's and not. I like how she like notices the cat after she's eaten something, and she, the, the cat was by the food, and she's like, "No, I only ate a little bit, just just a little bit." <laughs> I, I was expecting Guys. the cat to start laughing. <laughs> <laughs> so you that'd be a much better <laughs> cat would be like so you think you have escaped me Suzanne well I'm going to tell you what you've just done you've eaten poison and you will die in a minute I will sit here and watch you die in the process <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's it's a terrible scene because this movie really falls apart right here because it's like, <laughs> this is during the time with the whole poison scene. It's really painful to kind of watch until we get towards the end. And I'll set up some of the ending stuff here because uh, we blow a hole in the boat, right? And the boat is yeah. starting to sink. And Walter is locked up in his room and he's so concerned about his money and all this. Now, let me go into this part because this is very important. You're going to learn about this scene because um, one thing is when uh, Graydon Clark uh, looked at some tanks to see if he could film this scene. So what he did with Walter's room is he took his garage and he made Walter's room in his garage. So he took that set and put it in his garage. So he wanted to have a sinking scene. So what he did is he, once he was done with shooting Walter in the dry uh, room, he took the room and actually transported the room. And I think this is a wild idea, but it actually worked. He took the room that he made uh, in the garage and actually put it into his swimming pool. <laughs> wow. Yeah. So. Yeah. That's the reason why it looks like it's underwater. So then they shot at night because he knew at night you couldn't see anything in the background. And he just shot uh-huh. Walter in the room in the swimming pool. And that closes the scene. <laughs> Unfortunately, there were some bad things happened with this scene. Uh, they used several cats for filming this scene because uh, number one, the cats were not that intelligent. But worst of all, some of them couldn't swim. So mm. it included uh, one of the, our, a few of our cats did not make it in the swimming pool in the last bit of the scene. So it became very hard to film. And that was, uh, you know, that's the issue that has, that happened, you know, while filming this, uh, you know, this uh, scene. And so we're towards the climatic and just really, like I said, here it just falls apart because it gets really, if it's not silly enough, it really, really <laughs> gets silly here because what they do the whole uh, Titanic thing, I guess, you know, them two, because Walter's not, doesn't make it, right? Because mm-hmm. he, he realizes, come on, cat, let me have my money. And the cat's like, you know, you're not getting this money. No, let me have my money. No, you're not getting the money. And <laughs> the cat, you know, kills him. So then we're left with all the money that's on the lifeboat because they're on the lifeboat. And so we're basically at Rachel and uh, Martin who are, uh, are on the lifeboat and they've got all the briefcases. And then the cat keeps on jumping on the lifeboat and it's raining really bad and storming. So anybody want to touch on this? 
ridiculousness <laughs> for I guess, I guess I could. It was pretty confusing to me at first, but basically what she says is throw the briefcase with the money in it, and I was like, why Why would you, why, I don't understand. Like, the second, what, what would he get? So, the guy's smart, and he's like, oh, I'm gonna empty the money out first. So, good job, guy, you're not dumb. Yeah. But they empty out the money and throw the briefcase, and the cat actually, like, uses it as, like, a life raft instead of, like, trying to get onto the same boat as them. And I was like, oh, okay, that makes more sense. But at first I thought she was just like, you gotta hit this cat, throw the thing. And I was like... <laughs> I, but see, see, that's the thing. And I, I'm sorry, I, and I, I hate to think that this film has any plot holes, but... <laughs> Even if, let's say, I, I mean, let's think about the logic for this. First, it's storming. You got electricity and everything like that. And, and here's the whole thing, because I thought they were going to do that thing. You ever watch Gremlins and then, like, Stripes comes back alive, right? And it's kind of a scary mm-hmm. moment. And I thought, that's what they're doing, right? But then she kept on, oh, if if you do that, he's going to keep on, because the thing keeps on jumping, and they it's like a loop. Like, like if you take a video on YouTube and you loop it over and over again, he jumps on him and he goes and he throws it back in the water. He jumps on again and he throws it back in the water. Like, no, if you throw the briefcase out there, he'll jump on the briefcase and won't jump on you. <laughs> yeah, right. Can we think about this for a moment? I, I mean, yeah, that seems a 50-50 chance there. Because the cat could <laughs> We're be like, fine. hey, look. You're on a boat, and I know what a boat looks like. That's a briefcase. Briefcase? <gasps> boat. I know I was on a boat, so I'm going to assume <laughs> to jump on the boat. That's a briefcase. Yeah. Are you stupid? All right, briefcase? Boat. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm not saying that this film has flaws, but I'm just, I noticed that. But it that has flaws. It has, it says claws, it says claws. But I'm just saying, I, I don't know the logic. I, I just don't want to, I want to go in there like, it's, it's briefcase. You know, of course cats love briefcases. Yeah, that's it. Cats love briefcases. That's what I There you out. go. That's it. There's the logic. It curled up and took a nap. <laughs> it curled up and took a Very nap. Very wet nap. We ought to do a test, yeah. alright? We ought to take Jinx. And say, <clears throat> put a boat out there or a briefcase and see which one he'll pick. I <laughs> With this movie's track record, my cat's not going near water. <laughs> yeah. And you know, the funny <laughs> thing is too, as meanly as the cat jumps on the briefcase, it like, it like goes off and the cat's like, F you! You fooled me! I did not know this thing was gonna float this way! <laughs> yeah, bamboozled. <laughs> I'll get you one of these days. Dang me loving sparkling briefcases. <laughs> if this well, thing wasn't so, so shiny, man, I would have jumped on that boat. <laughs> the fact that we end this movie here, basically, and we have this cat floating away on the briefcase, does that open up the opportunity for a sequel? Well, they, they give you the opportunity. Oh, they do at the end. Remember the boy finds the yeah. cat on the beach? <laughs> Which, it's a completely different looking cat to, like, all the other cats shown in this movie. Yeah. Well, we're to assume that the insides ended up in that cat. That's what we're to assume. But we're we're getting ahead to our, uh, ourselves right now. Uh, why, 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 uh, Kitty is floating away on sparkling briefcase. We skip to them at, I guess, the Cayman Islands, and there's the uh, porter or the uh, customs, and he's going over everything. Anybody want to touch on this? That the porter or the customs guy never decides to open up the gym bag full of millions of dollars? <laughs> yeah, considering that's his job, I don't know how he missed that part. But uh, he was probably so taken back by the story of, like, poisonous, venomous cat at killing the crew and anyways he basically just chalks it up to you guys went through some major trauma and you don't know what you're talking about yeah and he's and, holding the brief and he's holding the gym bag <laughs> while he says it mm-hmm. that's great wow and he's like well here's your bag 
and and be cut, on your way. And cut to the child who finds the cat on the beach, where we assume, <coughs> where we assume that the insides are into the new cat, and then like like kiddo said, the possible for a sequel. This could be like a beginning of a Lord of the Rings trilogy thing. Oh goodness! <laughs> this was the prequel, actually. I think we're done Great. here because we, we 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 got the music, which is again one more time going the across song. the party yeah. line. <laughs> more time going Great. across the party line. Mm-hmm. All right, so they're they're partying. Okay, the movie's over with. I. Right. Thoughts. Uh, let's let's talk about how this film is related to the the whole economic society of classes and how that the psychological impact of a higher class with a boat and a cat has affected the the lower class of society who doesn't understand the higher class because like do you even triple down, bro? And <laughs> I can't even double up. And how that the persecution of the upper class with cats and boats and the yacht is what is affecting. That's what Graydon Clark was trying to say. And that, that we as a society need to band together and get rid of all cats and uh, upper class. And, and there you go, folks. I mean, it's just a upper cats. Yeah. Upper, upper cats, cats. Upper cats. It's, get rid it's of a, them. It is a reflection of our society and what we're going through now and everything like that. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's yeah. one man's opinion, you know. That's one cat's opinion. Yeah. Some I, I, cats. I'm just saying it's Some a Marvel cats. Shakespeare tale of Romeo and Juliet meets Die Hard. <laughs> this is more like cats and dogs meets uh, um man. I don't know any ship movies. Ghost ship? <laughs> 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 That's a good one. I so I, I hmm. yeah. Throw me at it. Let's let's see. Uh, would you rec? Uh, where we need to go? Let's. Would you recommend this film? Who would you recommend this film? Oh wow! Oh. Uh, boating enthusiasts. Yeah, I was gonna say something about <laughs> chips. Uh, um, people who lived in the eighties. I was not one of those people. <laughs> So, <laughs> um, let's see. I was gonna say, if you like bad movies, they did a really yes. good job of making this a bad movie. Yeah, B horror, you like? Yeah, yeah. yeah. You well, enjoy I, mean, it. I mean, let me yes. ask you this because I don't know uh, what movies. Because this was '87, so this is a little late in the game. Uh, mm-hmm. I mean, like I said, if you look at '84, that's when the first Nightmare on Elm Street. Hit and it kind of like revamped the horror films a little bit because it was a blockbuster, right? Um, I mean, and I guess he felt like he could capitalize on the, you know, the kind of the horror, you know, the horror thing was getting big again. They revamped the Leatherface, even. Uh, they revamped a lot of older characters. Horror was making a second attempt, you know. So I can see the intelligence of trying to do this. And then, of course, you got to think about Gremlins, too. Gremlins yeah. was real popular too, and I remember when that film hit. That was like a blockbuster. I, w- I went to that film when I was a kid. Um, a guy, kid that I, who was friend with me, uh, he got grounded, so he didn't get to go. So, and his mom said, "Don't tell him that uh, the film's plot because I'm going to end up taking him anyways this weekend." I'm like, okay. I will. Hey, Mason, guess what happened, Gremlins? <laughs> Don't tell me! <laughs> Don't see them after midnight. But, uh, true story, his wife, he told his wife about what he wanted to do. He wanted to do a film about, you know, killer rats. He want, This film was about killer rats. And his wife said, ooh, no one likes rats. So, what about cats? Hmm. There you go, everybody likes cats. So he changed it over to cats, and he came up with this thing. And the whole thing about the barfing, the animal thing, I don't know what that came about, but it was like, sure, go with it. He still wanted the rat, but he put it 
In the cat. In the cat. And I mean, yeah. that makes somewhat sense, I guess. Like, the cat ate this radioactive mutant rat, right. and then it carried it off right with it. Cat? Well, yeah, I guess it would be a compromise. I want rats. I want cats. Hey, let's combine them together. And we get this uninvited. I would say this. <laughs> if uh, you're with the guys at college or something and you want a guy now just watching movies and drinking a beer and having a good time, this is the movie for you. Like You just want to spend a couple hours together and, and just riff at it. Because it is a very rippable movie. It's a very bad, good movie. It's a movie, like I said, I discovered a couple of years ago. Didn't even know it existed. And I'm, I'm, I have not regretted finding it. And I'm so glad I got to introduce it to you guys. Because, uh, you know, I, like I was telling Caleb, I, in my life, I actually was searching for the worst movies of all time. And there are movies that are... If you want to go movies that are so bad, they're good. This one, Troll 2 is another one. Have you guys ever seen Troll 2? Mm-mm. Oh, my no. God. No. That is really... watch. Even watch the documentary about Troll 2. It's just uh, worth it. Uh, I love it. Uh, you know, but, you know, like, being a fan of movies, uh, I, I know a lot of people think, go out there and get a good movie. Why would you watch a bad movie? It's... Maybe because there's not that many really good movies out there. But at the same time, if you're going to make a bad movie, why can't it be entertaining? Why does it have to be miserable? <laughs> why can't it be? Uh, can we talk about, I mean, like I said, this to me is his least offensive film, in my opinion. Like I said, uh, even the rape scene would be... Uh, very light for today. Yeah, it was done very light. Yeah, and I'm glad of that because, like I said, we sit around and talk about this, but, I mean, like, I watch this film, I don't feel like taking a shower. I, I don't feel like mm -hmm. I need to clean my mind. I feel like I'm watching a fun movie, even though it's so stupid. It's fun and stupid, and we're being kids for one day. And that's what I feel about it. I mean, how do you feel? Is there anything to you, kiddo, that you felt like you felt disturbing? Or is it just like I said, do you feel like it's just a kid movie, we're having fun, and who cares? I mean, honestly, to, to, to me, it was like they definitely didn't need that much of the like, okay, I get it, you guys are making out and all of the stuff, but like, it really didn't need to go on for as long as it did if you well, were just going to have scene, that. And I, I completely You're forget cool. about it. It's that music video scene. Because the one with the hand, let's be honest, the one with the hand is necessary because we need to know that this guy doesn't feel anything. That's the reason why this cat's not Yes, dying. there's all that set up, you know. Yeah, that's set up nice. Uh, like I said, there is that porno music scene that is, I think, that, <laughs> and that's like, that's like, I it's think was so just so hot kiddos. in here. It's just for the kiddos, you know what yeah. I'm saying? Back in those days. Yeah, I guess so. Just, yeah, even just hearing that would, like, give you this vibe of what it, the scene's supposed to be like. But. Right. I mean, there was, if yeah. you watch horror films in those days, they would always have that scene. But like saying, it's not gratuitous. Like, I completely forget about that scene every time uh, that it's even in there. And I've seen this film like four or five times. And, and it's like a music video scene. I think he wanted to be kind of romantic. He wanted to kind of have like a little romance in it. And, but like I said, it does, it's not like it's cringy, like, you know, like I said, like if you watch Wacko, it's terrible. I mean, you, you can't even, it's so offensive and so, Cringy! Oh my gosh, he—it's not waste. Don't he waste your time on it? What about you? <laughs> Do you feel like so? If you were a teenager in the '80s, what would be your feelings on this? Because like you don't have access to Netflix, uh, you technically want to get out of the house and just watch a movie, you know? Well, okay, and yeah, honestly, for the time period, it—I mean, it fits that. I love that time period of like creature uh, cre creation, creature creation of that time era, you know? Um, how it's all done by hand, you know, like you said, there's no CGI, and they had to really be creative to even like 
try and capture what they were thinking of, you know? $200,000. So, this is what you get for $200,000, basically. Back then, probably, I don't know what you'd get now for that. Yeah, you know, I <laughs> could do it, but, you know, but like I said, you know, I don't have access to big names. And I think the thing is with Graydon Clark, like, he put Clue Gallagher and George Kennedy in there who are, I mean, George Kennedy's obviously miscast, let's put it this way. But he was miscast in Waco. But apparently he's friends with George. I guess him and George are good friends or something because he's able to get George in several films. But, you know, I don't know. Maybe George is just not picky on what he stars in. That's all I can think of. He's in, like, he's in Naked Gun and he's in Airport 75. And those are, like, from, those are night and day. And George's, if that's his mm-hmm. humor, I mean, if, if you watch his humor, I just don't get George Kennedy's humor stuff. But he was in a lot of horror films in the 80s like this, like low-budget ones. Not a lot of them, but if you, there's another one he did, too, about uh, about the Bigfoot monster that turns out to be an alien, So, which is another one we might want to watch sometime. But <laughs> Oh, Harry and the Hendersons? No, it's not Harry and the Hendersons. It's actually a Bigfoot <laughs> horror film where the Bigfoot monster turns out oh. to be an alien. Not making this up. True story. <laughs> Um, I, I'm done here. So, but like I said, I I don't know what to say. So, would you guys watch another bad film that is good or not after this? Oh yeah, Nate. Oh yeah. You? Yeah, I mean, I've I've seen I've I've definitely seen worse films that I watched and I just didn't enjoy. You know. So, like, the fact that this was a bad movie, but it was still, like, watchable, yeah. Mm-hmm. That's good enough for me. I mean, it's like, I don't know what I, you know, I, I you know, this is an experiment, you know, because it's kind of like, you know, because I, I feel like it's safe. I don't feel like I'm exposing, you know, like, y'all to really bad, something bad, you know what I'm saying? Uh-huh. Yeah, I feel like this is it was fun and like I said I can watch his film and I, I feel like it's fun and that's what the important thing is and another one though really would be like Troll 2 I've never seen anything like that in my life and but you know we'll see what's going on because, it, because it's going to be your guys' turn next so <laughs> oh. <laughs> All right, we've maybe we'll have to pull a really limit. bad one out oh my gosh we've reached our time limit and let's see, yeah, because, yo, oh, it actually, we went, according to this, we went 19 minutes over. It's your fault, kid. <laughs> You're drunk. That's okay, you can You're pick right. You're right. <laughs> you are right, baby. You are right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm peace, I'm out of here, guys. Um, I don't know what these guys might want to discuss, so we'll turn this thing off and put it into the savings thing here. Who's your daddy?